Hey, what's going on guys? I am Jeff Carpenter and today we're going to talk about speeding up your workflow with the Lumix camera system. Um, so you're probably asking, who am I? Uh, like I said, I'm Jeff. I'm a commercial portrait photographer based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Well, just outside. I live in a town called Franklin. Uh, and I've been a full-time photographer since 2010, so I guess that's eight years, a little over eight years now, uh, when, I, when I went full-time. So um, I own a company called Ready Light Media, which is uh, basically it's a rebranded re into a creative agency right now. And what that means is we are uh, pairing clients with a, uh, you know, a creator that fits their specific needs. So I shoot portraits, so I would take the portrait people, someone else might shoot food, video, you know, we kind of basically, what we do is we just make it a little more of a personal experience with that. But we're not talking about that today. So I also um, started a YouTube series called Outside the Softbox. So if you guys want to go to outsidethesoftbox.com, that is where you can find all those, and then you can follow us on YouTube from there. Um, but yeah, so but today we're going to talk about the Panasonic system. Uh, specifically, I'm shooting with the G9, uh, but we're kind of talk a little bit about how I started with the Lumix system and you know what, uh, what got me interested in, it in the first place. So uh, we're going to talk about the benefits of shooting with Lumix. Uh, I know some of you guys here shoot with Lumix already. Um, if you don't, this might be helpful as far as you know, if you're looking to make the switch, just maybe something that will ease that transition a little bit. Um, and we'll talk about how, how to incorporate uh, Lumix into your professional workflow. And then uh, if we have time, we will shoot, uh, do, we're going to do a little bit of a live demonstration. So we'll make time for that for sure. So that's really where we're at right now. And uh, so moving forward, we'll talk about why did I start, start shooting with, uh, with Lumix. So um, I was actually introduced to Lumix from a videographer that I worked with. Uh, and he was shooting with the uh, GH4. And we were on a joint photo video project. And I was shooting with this big old bulky DSLR. And we were shooting in a uh, recording studio for a, uh, for, for a bluegrass band while they were tracking. And my camera, you know, I, I basically had to go in in between sets and click because they, you know, you can't do it while you're recording because then you hear the shutter noise. So his was quiet. It was compact. So I was like actually really, and he was shooting video on it, but like we took some stills with his as well. But I was just really intrigued by the system and like the quality that you got from a really, really small compact camera system. Um, so I got my, I purchased my first one, uh, my first Lumix camera when the G7 came out. And I bought it really for, uh, you know, for video. Uh, like I said, we do some video with my company. So I got it for video and I actually bought two and just something to have a couple of cameras that shot 4K to kind of get with the times. And I started shooting stills with it and I actually I was like, man, this is like a really, really capable stills camera. So I started shooting a little bit more with it, and then more and more, and these are just some images that I shot with the G7. Um, so it was just a really, it was a really compact camera. I could carry it in my backpack, you know, just with one of the kit lenses and go to town where, you know, if I'm shooting with the DSLR, you know, you got these big lenses, it gets heavy. It's not, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it was nice to just have something I could throw in a bag and just walk around with. Um, so after that, I switched over and I got the G85. And I mean, you have G85, right? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I started shooting the G85, and I actually started using that on more of my professional jobs. Um, you know, the, the, with the internal stabilization, you, know, you had this ability to uh, to shoot, you know, quality work in a really compact body. And um, you know, I never ran into any issues with people wondering why I was shooting with a small camera. You know, it's just kind of if you if you go in and you're and you are, you know, confident in your ability they won't question you, you know, and, and your work speaks for yourself. So, you know, they saw work that I was shooting with that camera. So this is some other stuff that I shot with the G85. Um, bottom right, that's a realtor. So I shot almost everything for a real estate magazine with the G85. And then uh, here's one more. I shot this for Love Your Melon. It's a, uh, it's like a hat company so that they, uh, all the proceeds go to uh, childhood cancer. So we shot that and then it was just kind of something where I was like, but there are still some things with the G85 that didn't quite meet my needs as like a full time, and specifically shooting in studio as well. Like as you notice, all of those were on location. So there were a couple things that I, that as a studio shooter, the G85 just didn't quite have what I was looking for. So enter the G9. So that's 
camera specifically really designed for photographers. Um, so this is, we'll talk about some of the features there that really, really helped me as a, as a portrait photographer specifically, someone shooting in studio a lot, um, specifically tethering. So we'll talk about that in a second. But first we're going to really just talk about benefits of shooting on the Lumix system just as a whole. So this was shot with a G9, um, you know, again, in studio now. So I'm, I'm a big fan of instant, not delivery necessarily, but being able to view images on, like, on set right then and there on a big screen. So that's where tethering really comes into play for me. So, um, so the first thing first, really, I've talked about a little bit before, is the compact size. So the camera, I mean, they are small. Like, this is not a big camera. This is one of the bigger Panasonic cameras. If you have the G85, I mean, it's a lot smaller than this one even. But this one's got a little bit more packed into it. So um, one thing that's huge as far as the Panasonic and the Micro Four Thirds system is the size of lenses. So this is this. Is this. So this is a, basically a 70 to 200 equivalent. This one, and this is even, like, I would say on the smaller side of 70 to 200s in a lot of cases. Like, I've got a Tamron one that's a little bit bigger than this for my, for my other, uh, I have a full frame Nikon too. But this, uh, so this is the, the size and the, the weight. I mean, you can, so I mean, it's, it's light. It's, I mean, that's, that's basically, that's a 70 to 200 that you can put in your back pocket quite literally. So just make sure that gets back up to me. <laughs> um, yeah, right. <laughs> I got my eye on it. So, um, so basically, you know, the cameras and the lenses are basically half the size, half the weight. You know, for for if you are traveling around, you are going, you know, to location or traveling just in general. You know, it's a really great system to have where you're not sacrificing image quality. Um, like I'm, I'm actually going to Hawaii in a couple of days, and I'm going to fit every focal length between eight and 100, which is basically 16 and 200, in all of this here. And then I got an extra, this is basically 85 equivalent. So with that, like all four lenses, and I've got basically every focal length in the planet, and that is a small little, that's not taking up nearly as much as, you know, that. So, you know, it's just, it's just something to consider, especially when you, if you want to go and you like, I'm not going for where I'm going for vacation, but I'm going to shoot while I'm there, you know. So it's, it's basically having the ability to where like, oh, it's not like I'm not sacrificing a whole extra bag that I got to check and do all that stuff. I just throw it in my backpack and I, and I run with it. So um, another thing about the Lumix system that I actually really like, and it took me a minute to kind of get used to it, <laughs> is the quiet shutter. Um, being a DSLR shooter previously, I was used to like, you know, subconsciously, I was like, I wanted the loud shutter. But as I mentioned before, shooting in a recording studio where they're trying to track, you know, vocals, you can't have a, have a loud shutter. It just doesn't work. So having that is super, super nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's times where, you know, it, it, having the quiet shutter really, really comes into play and helps, you know, being a little more incognito, especially. So, um, you know, if you're doing, like I said, recording studios, shooting events even are, are good, you know, to sometimes you don't want this big loud shutter. Uh, in street shooting too, you know, you can kind of fly under the radar if you're, if you're under the, you know, have this quiet shutter. Let's see how, it's, it's, I don't know if you probably can't even hear it in the back. You might be able to, okay. <laughs> anyway, so that's the other thing. One thing that, I, like, honestly, is probably my favorite. Do you have a question? You can, yeah, you can silence it. For me, I still need a little bit of noise, <laughs> but but you can if you absolutely if you absolutely need it to be silent, you can make it silent. So, um, but anyway, so the other thing, the autofocus is like unreal. I uh, I've dealt with cameras that you know they're good cameras, sensor quality is great, you get good images, but like 80% of them are out of focus, especially if you're shooting at a shallow depth of field. Like this one, I can shoot. This is a going to 1.2. Uh, and I can shoot this, and it'll 99% of them. There might be one where it just misses focus, but like 99% of those photos are going to be in focus, which helps because then I don't have to call through them later. You know, a lot of times before I even sent them to the client, I was going through and pulling out all the out of focus photos just because I was like, I don't want them to see that because I don't want them to think I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so having the ability to not have to worry about that, I mean, that speeds up. I mean, that takes out an hour of basically post production time, which kind of falls into speeding up your workflow a little bit. If you don't have to worry about that, that's huge. So, um, yep. 
shooting portraits, my autofocus setting is going to be the face and eye detect. Um, I'll do, so I actually use this for my YouTube videos as well, just uh, for my talking stuff. I'll do tracking with that. So I'll just kind of use the, the app and I'll just have it hit my face. So if I happen to go in and out, it, it stays, stays on me. Um, you can do a couple different types. But uh, for me, 99.99% .99 of the time, I'm on face and eye detect. Uh, so it, it'll automatically cross hatch over the eye and it'll hit it on, like almost every time. So, and there was just a firmware which actually makes it even better. So it's, uh, it was good before, now it's even better. So, um, but yeah, so you know, if you, like I said, if you're shooting at wide apertures with really any other camera, you're, you know, just the slightest movement by you or your model is going gonna, is gonna to have that just go slightly out of focus. Even if it's just a sliver, if you zoom in to 100%, you're going to see it. So having the ability to not have to really worry about the autofocus and whether you're getting it, like, you know, you're, you're, our jobs as photographers is to create the images. It's not to worry about whether my gear's working or not. You know, so just not having that being in the back of my mind now, that helps me a ton, especially even just preparing for a shoot. You know, I, it's just something I don't even, I don't even think about it. So, um, yeah, it's like I, I've, I've shot portraits at 1.2 with, you know, with this. And, you know, this is basically an 85 equivalent, so, and I, maybe there's like one or two of all of them that were out of focus that I noticed. <laughs> so, uh, another thing too, not a huge thing, but the electronic viewfinder. So, it, it basically what that is, is it's not an optical viewfinder. So, if you're in here, you're looking, it, it shows up, and it's a, what you see is what you get image. So, you're, there's no guesswork involved in that, especially if you're shooting natural light. It's, it's really, really helpful as far as, you know, you are, if, if I'm, I mean, this isn't the electronic viewfinder, but if, if I'm going here and I turn my shutter speed, it'll, it basically, it represents what the image is going to look like straight in the camera. But what I really use it for mostly is if I'm on location and I'm not, and I'm on my laptop and I'm not tethering, I am basically, I'm using that to review images because it's basically a loop. You know, you look here, you, you're able to, push the little review button and you're in there and you can scroll through and look at it and then you're not you don't have to worry like you don't have to worry about sun flare on the monitor or anything like that thank you so much you're all a very honest bunch here <laughs> <laughs> so that's it's just something that it's that's a minor thing but like for me it's nice to be able to and then I'll just, I'll give my camera to whoever I'm shooting I'll be like here you know look through that see if you like it make sure it looks good cuz again me I when I'm shooting with people I want both of us to be on the same page. And I want everybody to know that we're getting what we need. You know, if, if I'm doing a corporate client, I don't want to take the images, leave, send them the images, and then something isn't to their liking or something isn't, you know, what they were expecting. So it's, it's partially peace of mind for myself. And then it's also peace of mind for them because they're the ones that are spending the money to, to pay me to give them what they need. So for, for that kind of stuff, if, it, if time allows and if you're able to do that, I almost always show clients on set what I'm getting, just so they just so they know. You know, it's a it's something that that it, it's a, it's a small. It doesn't seem like a big deal, really, but to them it, it'll it'll ease some minds, especially if they're dropping a good amount of money. You know, having me take their photos. So uh, right now we're going to talk about the imaging app. Speaking of instant delivery, so um, I honestly never thought I would really use it that much. It's, it, it, you know, it kind of seemed a little gimmicky when I first looked at it, but I actually find myself using it quite a bit. Um, so what it, what, what it does, basically, is it creates a Wi-Fi signal, and then you can control literally every aspect of the camera from your phone. I think they do tablets, uh, like an iPhone as well, um, or an iPad. But yeah, so you can basically control it, you can transfer it, you can do everything like straight from there. and um, it's, it's just like something like I, I'm not going to give a client and that's going to be their final image. What I'll do, like a lot of people get kind of excited about technology. You know, if I'm, I'll always kind of show them the thing and I'll take the photo and be like, oh, cool, you can transfer from your phone. You can post it right now if you want. You know, I'll give you an edited image too. So don't, maybe don't, but, you know, having the ability to kind of appease the, uh, you know, the impatient client just by showing them, you know, they might want to send it to their, you know, their husband or wife, I'm doing their headshot. Because a lot of people come up to the screen and take a photo of it, you know. So, <laughs> so you know, it's, it's like, that's just to be like, oh, I want to make sure my husband likes this photo before I buy it or something like that. So, 
you know, having the ability to just give them, a, give them an image like that is nice. But it's, uh, again, not something I use like on my professional side a lot, but it is something like I get asked all the time like to bring a camera to a party. Be like, hey, can you bring your camera? I don't want to be a jerk, so I, I'm like, sure. But I don't have time to sit there and call through photos for an hour and a half after the, after the event I was supposed to just be attending, you know, and then sending it to him. So what I'll do, I'll take camera, take five, 10 photos, transfer it on my phone, text it to him, put the camera in the car, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about it later. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to open up the app right now, and I'm actually going to have somebody. I will actually take someone who has an iPhone, though. Who has an iPhone? All right. You, I'm going to borrow you. I'm going to take your photo real quick. So I'm going to basically just show you how quickly you can transfer and all this stuff with this. I bet you're just going to get a new headshot. So. <laughs> yeah, right? See? You knew you came for a reason, right? All right. So go ahead and stand right there for me. Actually, come forward a little bit for me. And a little further forward. Right there, perfect. All right, I'm not really going to worry too much about light placement right yet, but... I'm going to. So basically what I'm going to do is turn, I have my, I, I set up my camera to, for Wi-Fi just to, I made a hot button basically just to down on the directional pad there. And then once it's reading that, you just go into your settings. And I can only speak for iPhone because I don't have an Android, so I don't really know how it works on the other one, but I'm sure it's the same. Uh, so anyway, you just go there and you find it already found it for me, so it's G9, bunch of numbers. So that it, it basically, this creates its own Wi-Fi signal, and then it turns it into, uh, into uh, and then it basically you can control the app straight from there. So then I open up the app on here, and it'll just take a second to read it. And normally I would have this already set up if I was going to make sure I, I think I turned my Wi-Fi off on accident. How do you use like, the, the video function of that? I do. So like I said, for when I'm doing like the talking parts of my YouTube videos, I'll do it all through this. Because then I can stand, you know, the camera's over there, and I can stand there and kind of figure out where to stand. And I can push focus. So you can literally do touch button focus um, like right on, right through the app. So this is the image and the phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I actually turned my Wi-Fi off, so that, uh, that explains why I stopped working. And all right, so on the phone, it said under remote control, or on the camera, I mean. So I can either con choose remote operation or transfer image. So remote operation will literally, let me put this on a tripod real quick. Mm, yeah, yeah, so it's just an app through the iOS store. Or the Google Play, or, or whatever you're uh, you're using. And let me grab this guy. Yeah, right. It would be R and D. Let's move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So. I'm actually going to, real quickly, uh, unplug this. And can I uh, pull this tape up real quick? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now is this micro HDMI? Uh, no, it's full size HDMI. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, the flash is uh, Pro Photo B10. And so I'm just going to open this up so you can see what the camera's seeing. There it is, right there. All right, so, so, and let me make sure here. Let me unplug this real quick. I think I turned the. Uh, I had it to where it was a uh, clean signal, but I actually want to see everything. Hmm. Yeah, so like there was no, there, there was no, uh, like, 
Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. I can't. I can't do two things at once. Like I'm like I'm scrolling through menus and I can't. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I don't need to show you this on there. It was just gonna. It was. It's gonna make things so much better. You know. Uh, all right, come on. Actually, let's just scrap that because I'm just trying to do too many things at once here between the app and this and all that stuff. So, all right, so this portion is taking way too long now. So, <laughs> all right. I'm just going to do a couple testers here. Yeah, where's that light back there? I'm just arbitrarily turning knobs on that thing. So, all right, that's good right there. Okay, so let me go ahead and reconnect. Trust me, this does work a lot better when you're not trying to plug things into it and when you're not in front of a group of people <laughs> trying to show it, you know? <laughs> all right, so let's open the app back up. There it is, all right, so. I don't know if you can see this really, but basically there is the cross hatch on his eye. Let's take the photo or the phone. And so let's do a couple. I'm going to do it all from the phone. I can go in and I can change shutter speed, white balance, ISO, all that stuff right there through the, through the phone. So um, we'll just take a few. Angle a little bit towards the light for me. Put your weight on your right foot for me too, right there. Perfect. Alright, and take a shimmy that way for me, right there, perfect. And, and go eyes back at me, perfect. Alright, and for the take, sake of time, I'm just going to pick one for him, I'm not going to give him an option. <laughs> Is your uh, airdrop on? To everyone? Probably. Probably, alright, we'll see. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over from live control to playback. And what that's, that's going to do is it's basically going to show me all the images that are on the card. So we'll just, all right. So I'm going to transfer it to my phone. Let's download it real quick. And this is a raw file. That's a new thing with this camera. It might be a new thing with the update. You used to have to shoot JPEG. I think it converts it automatically now. So like I'm shooting all raw on here. Um, so it's it's it just transferred a raw photo onto my phone, so now it's in my camera roll, right there. So, and I'm gonna go here and AirDrop. Let's make sure we're that one right there. Yep. All right, there you go. See, now it's waiting. Accept. Now he has now he has a new headshot. So, <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> So that's just a nice thing. I do use it too when I'm taking pictures of my dogs who, yes, happen to have their own Instagram account and I want to take a nice image and instantly transfer it to, to my phone for that. So it's just a nice, it's a nice little, um, you know, tool to have in your back pocket. I, I'm not, I guess I'm not using it part of, as part of my professional workflow on a regular basis, but I, I do love having it and it's a really good tool to use. Um, so basically, um, that's that. What? You can't edit in the camera as well, right? With the older stuff. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure you can. I, I'll be honest. I've never used any of, if that exists, I've never used it. So um, let me move this out of your guys' way. <laughs> we'll come back to that in a second. Yeah, I think you, there's like, are you talking about like the, like the, in, in camera editing. like, can you do like spot healing and stuff? Okay, but you can do like, yeah, 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 okay, gotcha. Yeah, I think you can do the same thing, so. But I'm not, I, do, I shoot raw and then I'm just gonna bring it in. I'm gonna do everything in one location so it's not, you know, exactly. Because then I, you know, it's, uh, with stuff like that, it's hard because I feel like you end up, you can go so far and then you can never come back from it. So I don't like to do those in-camera type things for me. Um, you know, for someone who's just dumping it onto their phone to go to Instagram, honestly, there's probably apps on your phone that would, suffice you know that you might have a little more control um, and we're you know we're fiddling with the touch screen on the phone a little more than the than the camera so it might be better but I always recommend just bring it into your computer edit it there in Photoshop capture one Lightroom whatever you're gonna use um, yeah yeah there is yeah so you can definitely do that and you can do like spot healing and stuff with that right yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that. I've used that a little bit, but nothing, nothing crazy. I'm still, you know, I've got my pen tablet, and that, that's kind of what works for me. Again, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for you. I mean, you might, you know, some people might rather do it all on an iPad, iPhone, have it all mobile. But, you know, for me, bringing it on to, it's just, just part of my workflow. It's just what works. So, all right. So, what we're going to talk about now that we've I killed some time with the app is integrating Linux into your professional workflow. So, you know, some people might not think of Panasonic cameras as a professional, sh like, portrait camera. But I, it's my everyday shooter. It's, a, it's, a, it's the camera I use, like, almost exclusively now. Um, so anyway, so we're going to talk about that. One thing that is huge that I really, really love about it is how customizable this camera is. So with this camera, I don't think the G85 or GH5 might have it, but it's got custom user settings. So it's got uh, C1, C2, and C3, I believe, has three things you can set within that one. Um, so I've got... C1 is basically my kind of go-to starting point. And again, these are just starting points. You, put, you do it there, it'll save your white balance, your shutter speed, your aperture. But you're not always going to use those exact settings every single time. So it's kind of a good starting point rather than going through all your menus and changing your, you know, all the little things. Although the menu system in this camera is extremely user-friendly. So I've shot with Sony a little bit, and that's a nightmare. But in my opinion, yeah, I'm sure they've changed it. But um, so, it, basically what I did, I shot Nikon previously to, to shooting with Panasonic. And so I configured this camera to shoot like a Nikon camera. So, you know, I've got the front wheel. I mean, it already comes like this, but you can, you can change whether the front wheel or the back wheel is, uh, is shutter speed or aperture. You can flip, flip flop them. So I've got front wheel is aperture, back wheel is shutter speed. And I basically, for manual focus, like if I'm shooting with an adapter, and my old Nikon lens because they're all dumb adapters, so they don't actually connect with the camera. I made this little joystick back here, my manual focus assist. So I just pop that in, and it and it basically zooms it in and push a shutter, it takes photo. So you're not having to deal with, you know, that's the other thing is manual focus assist. It zooms it in again with that electronic viewfinder, and it allows you to, you know, to get darn near perfect focus even manually. So as long as you're not shooting somebody who's running or something like that. Um, so yeah, so basically for mine, I've got C1 is for headshots, C2 is for like real estate and architecture, just stuff like that, and then C3 is my setup for video, for the YouTube videos that I'm shooting, so it's basically, it, it already dumps, it puts the, I know I shoot them in the same spot every time for that one, so I know that my ISO has got to be at a certain point, I know my, you know, I'll put the Kelvin value to match with my constant light, so with that, it's basically just, uh, I just, and then I'm there. I don't have to go fiddle through. And I, I'm able to change my shooting mode into the like Cine like D, which is like the flattest profile for video on, on these cameras. So, um, but yeah, so like I said, it's really just a jumping off point having the, the ability to do that. But you can really even take this and, and change every single dial and button to be whatever suits you. So I kept them pretty similar to what they what they were but there were a few like I, I made my Wi-Fi button so it asked me if I want to terminate the connection so it's still connected but I made that my Wi-Fi button and you can go in and change every single little you know nook and cranny of this camera to fit however you need it to be um, and if you don't want to customize anything it, it's straight out of the box it's, it's user friendly and it's easy to pick it up and start shooting so um, what I did talk about before is tethering it's uh, something I, if I'm on location or if I'm anywhere my laptop can be and I'm shooting, I'm like 99.9% .9 of the time going to be tethering. Again, because I like to be able to have it show up on the screen or on my screen just so people know what they're getting right, you know, on set. So I'll, uh, I'm almost always tethering. Uh, the ability to instantly review images is peace of mind for everyone involved. You know, and I can go and make sure that I am getting focus in, in camera. With the DSLR, you're, you might bring it back and it looked in focus on the little screen on the back, but, you know, might not have been. And even if you're zooming in on those, the, the quality is not, not near the quality that the screens and the electronic viewfinders are on here. So, you know, it's just a nice to be able to have that and have them review and then 
pick images straight from there, and then I don't have to send a gallery later, um, which again saves a ton of time. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it's um, the ability to shoot tethered on Lumix is fairly new. I know the G85 can't do it, and I think the, GH, the GH5 can, but basically they're not. I can't just plug it into Lightroom and it shows up yet. Uh, I shoot with Capture One actually, so but you can't basically just like plug it in and play. So there is an app that you have to get um, that is called Lumix Tether, and I just did the update, so it's version 1.3 when I took this screenshot. And <laughs> uh, so basically, what you do is you go through and you open that up, and it's similar to the phone app, but it basically just gives you capabilities. It gives you live view. It gives you everything, but it dumps it into a, just a folder. So you basically, what you have to do is you have to set up like a hot folder, uh, or what they call it, a reference folder. And um, we'll go over that in a little bit. But um, right now, I actually do want to plug in. And I just want to kind of go through the app and just kind of show what it does and just kind of how it works. So um, if I can plug in here. The simplest things. <laughs> All right, so got my 900 foot cable here. And uh, all right, so I'm just going to plug in there. I'm going to watch yourself there. And I'm just going to have this face you guys real quick. So, all right, so what happens is when you turn the camera on, it's going to. And I'm going to exit out of that real quick. And I'm going to open up Lumix Tether. And I'm going to drag it over to that screen real quick. Oh, it's already there. Cool. All right, so what it's going to do is when I turn the camera on, is it's going to, let me turn it off real quick. Out of the box, it'll ask you what you want it, like, it to be as far as the, like I think it's PC bridge, backup, something, I don't know. Basically, there's an option called PC Tether. So what I do is I, I already set it to where it does that already, so I don't have to go and push it again. It's all about saving time. <laughs> so it'll tell me the USB power supply, another thing we haven't got to yet, but this does have USB. Uh, all right, this should have an image that comes up on there. There you go. All right. So um, we'll just sit over there. So that is the image. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and open up Capture One. And you can do the same thing with Lightroom, um, but I use Capture One, so it's just a little bit easier for me to do that. So I'm going to drag this over. And I already made a Panasonic Day session. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into Settings. And in my Reference folder, see over here where it says, Wait, hold up. That, you don't see it because it's not there. There it is. <laughs> All right, so it says reference folder, right? So right now it's, some, it's my last session that I had. So what I want to do is I want to change that to my current session. Again, for my workflow, what I do is I start a new session every time I have a new client or a new, se a new session, basically, um, just for peace of mind for me and organizational purposes. And then they all go into here. So basically Panasonic there, right there. I'm going to set it as the capture folder. So I go open, and then I go save. And let's just go here. I'm going to do that real quick. And the one thing about Capture One, and I did talk to them about this, is that it doesn't automatically populate. So that's kind of an issue that I, want, I hope they resolve. To where if I take another picture, it doesn't automatically, like I have to select. So when it comes through, I have to select it instead of, it doesn't just automatically go to that one. Not a huge deal, because what I'll do is basically, these will be, this will be on my screen. I'll see this. This will be on my screen. This is what will be on the, what the client sees, like on, on the wall mounted screen that I have. So I'll have that. And it'll just come through, and it'll have that and that. And then they'll just be seeing the most recent one. And then we kind of come over together, and we can look at it on my computer and pick selects from there. So um, another thing that's really, really cool about this app 
is this little LV thing here that stands for Live View. So that is what we're seeing right now. See? All right. So I didn't think I would use this really, um, just because you know I just like looking through the back of the camera and shooting like that. But where this came in hugely handy um, was the other day. I was shooting food. I don't shoot food often, but I, a friend of mine opened a restaurant and they needed some content for their food. And what we were doing was um, we were, instead of them setting it up, they like, instead of setting it up and then taking a test shot and then seeing if we were in the right spot, basically what I did is I had this, you know, had it set here. And he would go and he'd be looking at it and he'd be like, oh, well, let me make sure this is on. Auto focus. All right. And All right. So I would do that, and he's like, "Oh well, it's you know, it's not, it's not off. It's off to the side, you know." So he was able to just look here and adjust the food, and 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 put it how how he wanted it, and he wanted this to, you know, be be there instead of him looking there and being like, "Well, I hope the camera's in the right spot." You know, he was able to actually look at it. I just flipped my monitor around, and he was able to he was able to just look at it straight from here, and you know, flip it around, and and it was it literally shaved off about three hours of our shoot, um, just by doing that. And it was it was something again. I didn't I didn't think about it at the time, and then I, when I was doing, it, I was like, I don't know why, I've, you know, if I'm shooting products or something like that, I don't know why I didn't think about that in the first place. But especially in a situation like that, where he's you know, it's it's. Basically, the food is, you know, their their art, and they and they know how it. I don't know how it's supposed to go. I don't I don't know what it's, you know, that there's some sort of sauce that's supposed to go on the right side, and not the left side. I, I don't know these little details. So having the, you know, them set it up is is hugely is a huge advantage. So that's a nice thing. That that is a nice little, you know, I don't use it for portraits really, but you know, for little things like that, every once in a while I'll do something. A little out of my wheelhouse, and having a, having the ability to do that is, is really awesome. Yeah. yeah, you do that in camera. So yeah, that's uh, I think you might be able to do it in in the app as well. But all right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn off live view if I can. Dual monitors always confuse me. There we go. All right, and we're gonna kick back into my presentation here. All right, so we kind of talked about that. This is basically just a quick video of m me shooting that food. So the fork will disappear. You know, this was more me shooting it, but basically I, I controlled. What I was also doing is instead of pushing the shutter s button on the actual camera, I, I would trigger it from I would trigger it from here just so I didn't have any camera shake or anything. You know, the internal stabilization does a darn good job, but just I any any help you can get where you're not touching it. And you're just pushing the button on there is is going to help you, especially getting the really really crisp images for for product and, and stuff like this. What's the free slider for that? Uh, where at? Oh, that that's the the lights that I typically use, uh, policy buff. So they're it's their remote. Yeah. So this is just a video I took, but so that's the the Lumix Tether app. And then um, that's basically the capture ones behind it. That right there is the uh, you know each image as it comes in. So I'm I'm pushing that button on my trackpad on here, and it's triggering the camera. Yep. Mm -hmm. So basically, it just it runs through this USB cable and it, and it reads everything. I don't want to get into the technology because I don't know. So, <laughs> but I know it works and I love it. So that's uh, you know that's basically just so like I said with that shoot we had allotted I think eight hours for that whole shoot. And we were, you know, I've done it before, and it's always really tedious. And I think we uh, we shaved off about three and a half hours. So, your question? Just curious, what, what lens were you using? Macro? I didn't. I now. What, 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 what what let me let me tell you in just a second. I gotta I gotta look at the <laughs> metadata. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> um, I I believe I was shooting it with um. It was probably around 85, but I was shooting it with the 12 to 60. Okay. So yeah, so 12 to 60, but it, it would have been around 40 millimeters. Um, that is, I'm just gonna 
I think I have a picture on my phone. I'm just going to give you my phone so you can see it. <laughs> it's, it, it was probably from the food. So they wanted this specifically to be, the, like there, it's called Pork Belly uh, Farmhouse. So it's a farm to table restaurant. And they, that's part of their logo. So they just wanted that, like the, the little pig logo in the bottom. I would say I was from the food, I was probably about um, probably like three feet, maybe. You know, so I was pulled back because I wasn't shooting macro. I was pulled back a little bit and then zoomed back in. Um, yeah, honestly, I have a behind the scenes shot of that somewhere. Actually, I lied, I don't anymore. Find me after and I'll show you. So yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you a few images. So these were taken with the G9 uh, recently in the last month or two. Um, we're going to kind of go over the left image a little bit later. We won't have the ring light because I didn't bring one. Um, but yeah, so basically that, uh, that concludes a lot of what I'm talking about. What I'm going to do now is we, uh, we got a little bit of time left. I'm going to do a live demo. So what we're going to, yes, somebody has a question. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the lights were facing that way. I was just testing it to make sure it showed up. With this camera, mm -hmm. what's the, if you want to shoot in some place where, you know, you don't want to have a flash in the shot. Yeah. As far as ISO, are you talking about like? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've shot up to 3200, and like, the noise didn't really bother me. And if you have a little bit of you know, noise, you can just throw a grain on it in post-production, and no one's none the wiser. So I mean, it's, I mean that's kind of cheating. But, <laughs> but really, you can, you can the, like the low light sensitivity on these cameras is, is not what they used to be. I mean, they're good. So well, let's, let's just see here. Let's, are we still on there? All right. And, and the other thing is this has internal stabilization, which I think this camera specifically can, has like six and a half stops of stabilization, so I can even drag the shutter pretty low, handheld, and it and it won't and you won't get that much blur. I mean th that's all subjective, but like well, we'll go down to and you know I can go down to 1.2 if I really wanted to, but let's go ISO. Let's try that. And Again, the lights are going to be, now that's like way too bright, but let me, let me kill that. Still going to be super bright, but I don't need it to be right there. All right, and let's actually do this. Let's go live view real quick, and this should actually. So see, it's, it's already finding its face. Go ahead and move around a little bit. So that's the, that's the, that's, that is the, um, and I, I bump my eyes out like way up, so let's go down to 1600. That's probably a little, a little better. All right. So it'll, it'll basically, it'll follow his face. What you're not seeing on here, on mine, you actually, there's cross hatches over his eye. Um, but so I can go here and you can control video from here as well. So, um, you yeah, know, so I don't know where that is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so we will. We're gonna jump into a live demo real quick. Um, I'll leave this all set up because now I already explained how to set the tethering up. But I'm gonna move this if it does. And I'll leave it. Seems fragile. All right. Uh, so what we're going to talk about with the live demo is, actually, let's go ahead and push play on there. So we're going to talk about, uh, since in the class kind of explanation it said studio setting, uh, so I'm going to use uh, V-flats, which are basically something I use in a studio all the time. Uh, everybody familiar with V-flats at all? No? All right, so we're going we're gonna to learn some stuff here. <laughs> All right, so V flats basically traditionally they've been uh, they've just been really big pieces of white on one side, black on the other side, foam core that makes a V that's put together with tape. It's the name really suits it, right? So what we have today are these portable ones, though, 
from V Flat World. And Toby's right there. He he's the man behind the behind them right there. So he uh, so basically what you do is they just come up and put them like that. All right, so simple. Now I can put this in the back of my car and take them with me, which I never was able to do before. So um, what I'm going to do, we're just going to talk about just five different ways that you can use these in a studio and uh, just kind of kind of go from there. We're running a little low on time, so we're going to kind of fly through these. But are you Shannon? Perfect. <laughs> Come on up here. <laughs> Sorry, we, we got started a little late, so. All right, and I'm just going to have you stand in this area. But I'm gonna Sorry, you guys are going to get blocked right here. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to kill this light. And I'm going to sneak by here real quick. Sorry. All right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is using it as fill. This is probably the most common use of a V-flat. And basically what I'm doing, I've got it on the white side. Take one step forward for me, if you could. And basically what it's done, it's something when you have a pre-existing light source, basically you're going to, this light's going to hit, it's going to illuminate her face, but it's also going to bounce back on here, illuminating the one side. I mean, it's, it's basic, basic lighting stuff, but this is what we're going to talk about real quick. And I just got to make sure I got everything. Uh, let me do a, I should probably take my ISO back down <laughs> and let's go up there all right and I have no idea where the settings are at right now if you notice I'm not using a light meter so <laughs> And go and just like look straight at me for me. And let's come. This is a, a good lesson on shooting in really tight spaces too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So one thing to remember when you're shooting with uh, with with uh, <laughs> when you're shooting with fill, it's all like the intensity of the fill is going to be is is directly correlated with proximity to your subject. So. Put my camera on. All right, and and I'm gonna start putting these up so you guys can see them. We don't need to see those words there. And I'm gonna get rid of the live view. All right, so it's a little dark. Let me put you at. Yeah, so we'll go back into Capture One in a second. Where so they're dumping them all. They're dumping them all into Capture One right now. Um, actually, you know, increase the depth a little bit. Try and get as much ambient light out of here as I can. Perfect. All right. Let's see where we're at there. I'm assuming that's outside the thing up there. <laughs> I don't actually know. Just a touch. All right, so I'm going to pull this away for a second. And put her, sorry, <laughs> put it right there. So this is going to be without anything. And so notice we got a lot more shadow on the side on that side of her face. So we'll bring this back in. And again, proximity is what's like huge here. So bringing it in, if I bring it in really close, again, if I do that, I can't take a wide shot. It's got to be a really tight head shot. So if I bring this in, and, and, the, and the angle helps as well. With these, it's a pretty forgiving thing. It's just a big white you know, sheet, basically. So you can angle it. It doesn't have to be, you know, if you're shooting with a silver reflector, you have to be a little more pinpoint with it. But with white, you can actually, you're a little bit forgiving. So. We'll go right here. 
So now we're going to, and what I'm seeing now is I, it's in the shot, so I gotta move it back a little bit. Watch your feet. No, you're fine, sorry. All right, so now we're gonna have just a little bit of kickback with that, and you'll see as it comes in, you lose, you, you lose the, the, the contrast. So let me come back over to capture one here. And that's not her. All right, so, and I will take that one and that one. All right, so one on the left is nothing. That's just open. One on the right, and it was a little further away. I could bring it in real close and like really get that, but honestly, uh, this is where you know your outfit and everything kind of factors in. You know, I, I think I would go with a little bit more of a contrasty look than than having the really like bright, you know, no contrast at all. So let's, so we all understand Phil. And let's go back over here. I'm gonna jump back over to the slideshow real quick. And we're talking about negative Phil now. So basically, it's exactly the same thing, but on the black side, exactly. So I'm try and get out of here without hitting anybody in the face. So what this is going to do is it's, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a little bit more contrasty than nothing, because I'm probably getting a little bit of ambient light still, not a ton, uh, you know, because we're in a big uh, negative space here. I don't have light coming from over there that's, that's allowing her to, to get the, the kickback. But so it'll still basically be And let me. So we've got, but it is a bit. So that's negative fill. That's that. It's a little bit. You can definitely see between the two, you know. And then, and then even beyond that, we've got uh, like that one there. So that's fill nothing negative fill there. Yep. So this one, the nothing is in the middle. So just notice that there's a lot more contrast on her, on that side of her face. And basically what that black side is doing is completely absorbing the light and it's not allowing anything to come through. This one here or this one? And so that one and that one. It's, it's close. It's not, again, like I said, we don't have a lot of light coming. This works well in like a natural light situation where you have a bunch of ambient light and you're just kind of trying to pop a little bit of flash, but then you, and then you, then you bring that in to like really, really block out that light. So it, in this situation, it's, it's a very subtle, you know, subtle difference, but, but yeah, so that's negative fill. Basically, it's just you, the same thing and the name kind of speaks for itself. It's just, it's pulling the light away. So after that, we're going to be using it, and I'm tr I'm trying to fly through these because I, th I think we're we're running fairly low on time here. So, um, all right. So using it as a key light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this beauty dish off, and I'm sneak by here real quick. So what this does, and you can do it a couple different ways, but basically doing it this way is just taking this strobe, instead of using it as fill where it was another existing light source, you're basically creating a big light source with this. So if I went straight and shine this bare bulb at her, I mean, it's got a little bit of diffusion on the front here, so it'll actually, it'll look okay. You know, it depended on the look. If we put her right up against the wall, we get a cool hard shadow on there, it'd look cool. But right now we want to make it really soft. So basically we're going to flip this around. And anybody have any guesses as to what I'm going to have to do with the power of this strobe to compensate for? So what was that? So it, you can make it wider. I'm just, I just don't have a ton of space here. So, <laughs> so basically what I'm going to have to do is I'm, it was at 6.3, maybe not maximum power. But we're definitely going to have to increase the power a little bit because it's, it's traveling further. So it's going to have to get to there and then bounce back 
So it's traveling three times as far as it was inside this beauty dish, where you know it's bouncing into here and then then back. So, so we'll just go ahead and do math, where it's just turn the knob and see what happens. So, I think it goes to ten. <laughs> I think it goes to ten. I'm not positive, but. All right, now I've got to find a way back to my computer. <laughs> so again, what I was doing with that was I was just taking that light, I was bouncing it in there. I can open this up a little bit more and spread the light even further and make it even more of a... So it would be uh, self-serve. Yeah, exactly. So let me get out of here real quick. And so it's a, just a much softer general light and there's almost no sh I mean there's a little bit of shadow there but it's a soft shadow it's not it's not a really hard shadow I can probably bring the light down a little bit but another thing to keep in mind too is actually let's just go ahead and excuse me sorry I'm going to flip this around and this is going to be really 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 pinpoint directional but again since now it's not bouncing anything you got to turn the power down so a lot so Go to there. No. So that was just the light spilling from there. So this is just going to be and again. I'm, so this is a, this was the issue that I was having with Capture One is it doesn't auto populate. So oh, that's way dark. I turned it down too far. So I can either turn the power up on this, or I can turn my aperture down. But let's bring this back up. <laughs> but you can even see in that one there, like see the shadow underneath her chin. I'm just going to go ahead and take this one and boom. <laughs> So what we're going to look at here as far as the difference is the shadow underneath the chin, the shadow on the wall. So we got the shadow on the wall, we got the shadow underneath the chin, very, very hard. Yes? So again, that's because it's a really specular light, it's pointing directly at her. You know, you're going to have a lot more of that. You can take that on post pretty easily, not, it's not any problem. But another thing we're going to look at here is, is the catch light in her eye. So. See how small it is? See how that, and you can even see me in there. Mm -hmm. So like the, the catch light itself is a much bigger catch light because it's a bigger light source. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's going to be, you can, you can always see the representation of what light was used in an image just by looking at the eyes. Right. So like I'll go through, you know, I'm shopping with my wife and I'll go through the, the uh, you know, target makeup aisle and you see all the beauty images, you can see what, what light setup they had just by looking at their eyes. So <laughs> all right, so that is using it as a fill light or a key light rather. I'm gonna break this down real quick just so we can try not to kill anybody here. <laughs> all right. Just so I can walk around. All right. Let's just put that there. Now I can see you guys. All right, and we're almost done, guys. We're running through this. All right, so another way we can use it is as a flag. So a flag and negative fill can kind of be you know, mistaken sometimes. But what we're going to do is we're going to kick on this backlight now. And I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. So this is going to be just kind of shining on in the background. And put that right there. I'll just put it off to the side. Normally, if I'm going to do it like with this, I would have two lights in the background, but we just got one today. So it might kind of start having a little bit of fall off on that side. But another thing, too, when you're shooting into a white background or a background, having it kind of feathered off to one side is good because then you won't get that really, really, basically it'll kind of skirt off to the side. So, let me, all right. And 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in between her, like to the light, it's not sh shining on her at all. So basically all this is doing is blocking the light. It's literally flagging the light. So make sure I kick that on. There. And we'll have you base back in the same spot. And I'm going to turn this beauty dish. All right. So put the beauty dish back on. So we had a bare ball, so I had to turn the power up just a little bit. And perfect. Is anybody back there? Can you just turn that, the back light, just turn the knob uh, to the right, so up. I don't know, what's the number at right now? Just nine. Uh, just bring it up to like eight. So that's just lighting the background, right. but basically by having that in between her, I'm not getting any spill. So. Let's do this. So I'm going to have you like almost all the way, like just even with this. And I'm going to have that there. And we'll angle this. And all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her there. And then I'm going to. And my key light is going to have to be. It's all backwards here. All right, so my key light's got to come up because she moved further away. And all right, so we're basically you know, good there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this away. I'm just going to stick this right here for now. to where she's still kind of behind it. I'm just going to have you guys hold on to that real quick for me. So I'll stand in the same spot right there. What's probably going to happen, I don't know, would depend on the where I have it. She'll probably get a little bit of hot spot from, from that light. See? So basically all that did was block the light from hitting her. It's, it's, this stuff here is not rocket science, but just having these little tools definitely helps. Just minimal things like that. So, uh, 195 for this. Uh, 379 for two. You can get them downstairs too. So, um, all right. Just gonna put that there. We're moving on. We're moving on. So the third, third, fifth. I don't know why I said third. So the fifth and final one is using it as a background. Now, I'll caution you, these are not designed to be a background, but you can do it. So really just for headshots. So I mean, we have a nice background here already, but I'll actually use this one as the key light. So we'll just stick this back here. That into there. Okay. And we'll set this other one up. And these do set up like super easy. It's just white tape on the top and then fold them up like that. So we'll do white first. So all this basically same same deal. Again, like I said, these are not designed to be backgrounds. They can be, but you do have these seams in them. So you know, it's just something to kind of keep in mind. I'm going to lower this background stand just a little bit. And so I'm just going to use this. I'm going to basically, you know, I'm going to go keep it where it was. I'm going to basically blast the seams out of it so you don't see them at all anyway. So this, this is going to be a white background. 
headshot. And so here, so that was the one without the flag. And here is there. We got to bring that key light up just a little bit because again, we're balancing it again, so we got to adjust for that. Bring it up to stop. All right. And I'm also standing in front of it, too. So that will block a tiny bit of light. So there we go. So that's using that as a background. Just a simple, you know, if it, we, one thing, she has blonde hair to keep in mind when kicking the light into a white background. You'll, you'll, and it's not doing it too bad right here, but you will start to eventually, if you, if you turn the power up even further, you'll start to lose the detail, and you kind of get aliasing in the hairs. And that's really like specifically with people that are blonde. So what we'll do now, pull this light out. We'll flip it around, make it black. I mean, not really. I, I wouldn't. So I mean, you can, but she's probably wearing highlighter too, right? Yeah. So that that does that actually like provides definition to her face. I mean, it, it, and if I need it, if it's a little too much, I can take it a little way in post. But it's, it's a lot harder to add that back in than it is to take it out. But yeah, with, with beauty shots specifically, and I did tell her to, to kind of come, you know, with beauty shots in mind, so. All right, so again, same kind of thing with the black side. And I'm actually going to use the beauty dish for this one because I really want the light to fall off and with this big, soft, basically giant softbox we have now, it's going to throw a whole bunch of light there. It's going to kind of, you know, you're, you're not going to get the, the really dark background that we're, that I'm wanting. So, watch your head there. All right, cool. Let's put that one off to the side. And throw the beauty dish back on there. So one thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to kind of bring her a little further away from the background because that will allow the light to fall off quicker so it's not going to hit her. How, any of you familiar with the inverse square law? So basically it's just the formula for light fall off. So all right. Jenna, go ahead and come forward for me. And you can also achieve that by feathering the light off the side. So I can kind of feather a little bit further this way. You know, if I want it to be that way and get more on the background, I can kind of shoot it directly at her. But we'll just kind of keep it at a 45 degree angle for now. And let me go ahead and move this over. All right, so that was the last shot. And so. Make sure this light's off, because otherwise that'd be a really bad picture. There you go. All right, it's off. <laughs> All right. All right, so one thing you had to keep in mind, though, is make sure you replace them where you can't see the little white tab there. So, and that's just a matter of communication with, you, with your model. So, that's good right there. Perfect. And this is where I can go ahead and probably bring, you know, maybe I'll bring Phil back in. So, and Phil's not a guy, but there might be one here, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, what about just bringing a hair light in? You, yeah, so yeah, definitely. Give her a, give yep. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and raise that up and just bring it over the back side of the, back side of the thing. So, another thing too I can do that will increase the. That will increase the um, the fall off or make it fall off a little bit quicker. Is I can throw a grid on this beauty dish as well, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to have you come forward. So th it has to be one or the other. So it's like it can't be black on one side, black on the other. I actually have the original version that has the and the and these ones that have black that have the black version of Velcro as well. And I actually prefer the, I prefer the white. Because again, I'm not using it, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not using it as a, I'm not really using it as a background most of the time. So, 
see if this can go high enough. Why does it work? Hmm? It, I, I prefer it just basically, I mean, if you had to have one or the other, I don't know, I just, I, I don't, if I'm, if, here's the thing, if I'm making a black background 99% of the time, I'm using it with a gray seamless, and I'm just coming further away from the background to allow the light to fall off. So I've never used these as black background, except for right now, so. <laughs> All right, but we will throw a hair light on there, turn the volume down. I don't know why it's not really volume. It's just to feel like it's a volume knob. <laughs> All right. So that just adds a little bit of separation there. Not a ton. I can bring that up a little bit more if I want. And I don't have it directly at her either. I've got it a little bit, got a little bit off to the side, kind of hitting this side of the so hitting this side of the of the B flat. And that's it. But in theory too, you can make a white background black if you have enough space. Yeah. You know, so all right, so that is that. We do have a couple other bonusy things that you can do with these specifically, and we'll just go through those real quick. Because I think we're a couple minutes over schedule. It does not, no. All right, so I'm actually gonna have you sit for these ones, so. And I got a chair and everything. All right, so I'm shooting headshots a lot. I would say 80% of the time, and you know, my shooting is gonna be headshots, so. One thing that I use these for, and watch your head there. And down there. All right, so what I do is I'm using these as, so these foldable ones are nice because I can actually use this as a bounce fill. And previously, where see her natural thing is to hold it, you can actually let go and just let it sit in your lap and it'll stay up like that. So typically I would do it in a taller stool. It works a little bit better, but and I would also usually have a boom stand that would come over, but right now we'll just kind of do it like this. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to, all right, so another way to do background, this is actually two of the V-flats checkerboarded together um, like that. So I had two of them C stand up. So that's just another fun way you can use, the, use it as a background, but and let's go ahead and Yeah, simple light setup. I had a hard light source to camera right, just to kind of give a little bit of a give a little bit of a highlight on her face, and then the main one's just kind of illuminating everything evenly. Just it's a big 60-inch octabox. Hmm? This one will be on. Yeah, I, I decided to keep it on. So this is going to be a hair light again, just to add some separation on the black background. And a lot of times too, like I'm gonna move around, so she's lower now, I'm gonna move around based on where those little tabs are and where, let's bring this over just a little bit. So it's a little higher and further away from her now. So, but you are getting, it's not quite as, black now, so we're, we're losing the black part because I turned the light up, so it's going to shine more light on the background. And you're also reflecting light from here, which is going to spill on the background as well. So you have to kind of keep all this in mind when you're, when you're thinking about the different, you know, where you're, you know, where the light's coming from. Even, you know, if I, I'm shooting at F9 right now, the reason I'm not, sh I like to shoot really, really kind of, you know, shallowed up the field in studio a lot. But right now I can't because I've got all these constant lights that are going to affect my exposure. So, so you just kind of got to play with it a little bit. I could bring those back into, into the shot 
and actually use that as a separate light. As you can see it when I'm, well, you can't. I can see it because <laughs> it's on my camera. But let's do that. Let's bring that back in. Now, if I bring my aperture down, that's going to affect flash power. So if I just take the shot, it's going to be way overexposed. So basically, it's letting more light in, so the flashes are able to are getting more light through to the sensor. So let's turn these way down, just to keep things simple and me not having to go back and forth. I'm just going to turn this light off. Native ISO on the Lumix cameras are 200. Mm -hmm. Yep. So right now, this is without anything. That's just these lights here. You get a little bit of little bit, right? So let's bring it down even further. Let's go to 2.0. You're going to get a little bit of. So I'm getting a little bit of that. And now I can just, this is still probably going to be too much, even at lowest power. We'll see, though. So it's, it's a nice mixture of the ambient light that we had in here and that. But basically, if I take this away, just as an example, have you hold that for me. What do we think is going to happen now that I took that away? Yeah. Right, exactly. So we're going to get a shadow underneath, underneath her chin. Not a ton, but you do see it right there underneath, underneath her chin. So I don't, I don't hate that, but I, I do like this a little bit more flattering. And you get that nice kind of under, under catch light. So that is really all I have to talk about, guys. I think there was one more thing. <laughs> all right, so we are going to wrap it at that. And if you guys want to get in touch with me, this is how you can contact me. Um, Instagram is readylightmedia. Email is info at readylightmedia.com. And if you are interested in any of my tutorial stuff, um, I've got uh, Outside the Softbox is my new series I just started. So you can go to outsidethesoftbox.com. And that's how you can find me. So I appreciate your time, guys. And if you have questions, I'll be sticking around for a little bit if you have any questions. So.